next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. Lazarus, the top don. You already know Luke. what it is. Vision Beats, my guy. You already know what it is. Good, my boy. How are you? Feeling great to be here. Welcome salute, to the show. Salute, How y'all feeling today? Fantastic. Great to be here. One take God. Feeling one take good. God. Have you always been like, oh, one take God? Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of like the, the lyrical, you know, chamber that I come from and the, and the team. You know, it was funny. I was watching like the, uh, I think on YouTube, you had like some quarantine bar stuff. Correct. Um, Obviously, pandemic. Yeah. like, all those were one take too? Yeah. That's crazy. So like how like you and I have known each other for like, you know, Blue, I've known you for almost a year now. Uh Laz, you and I have known it's, each other for like it's been that long? Yeah, about a year. About a year? Yeah, about yeah. a year. Wow. I've Time. known you for like two years now. Like two years now. Two ish years ish. Yeah. Um, but for you, like, I didn't know you before the pandemic or before quarantine. So like where does well one, how does this, how does this music journey start for you? How long you've been grinding for this? And then how do you two meet each other too? All right, great question. Um, you know, for those that don't know me, Lazarus the Top Dawn, you know, I've been making music since I was about ten years old. You know, I come from a musical dynasty. Um I'm Puerto Rican and Cuban. Um both my uncles um were basically famous in music. One name got a street named in the Bronx after him. The, my other uncle has one named in Harlem. All right. I did was kind of um, create my name, Laz the Dawn, basically based upon them. They were real Dawns. And then afterwards, uh, you know, I got blessed. I started off at first with uh, Terror Squad and the House of Representatives. And uh, after I started to learn the business, um, you know, I created my own imprint in 2005 called Top Dawn Empire and Top Dawn Fire. Publishing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all the way up to now where I've been grinding to this point where, you know, with my team at Accolades, like um, I have some heavy affiliations, unlike a lot of artists that I know. So I'm affiliated, of course, with Lord Tear. I'm affiliated with, you know, Amadeus and the Army. I wound up, you know, signing a one album deal with him. And uh, we wound up putting out the I Get Adam Verbal Warfare album. Yeah. It went gold. Uh, after that came out, then uh, I hooked up with, you know, my brother Blue. Um, Blue basically produced five tracks for me When he first started I remember when me and him first met I was at a showcase He invited me to And he's like Yo I make beats that. And I'm like Alright cool Let me see what you got And then uh, I made a record for him That went into a movie Called Getting Fly And then uh, afterwards The magic just started happening From there to be honest Fire, fire. He told your whole part for you bro I know right he, like, not I, mean, I couldn't get one word in But yeah as he said um, I'm gonna piggyback off Of what he said It's true I, I met him in a showcase It was downtown Brooklyn It was in uh, Amarachi Lounge Correct And uh, we had a big show there And Lazarus had his Terror Squad chain I was like Hey who is this guy You know I didn't know who he was And I approached him I said hey listen man You ever need beats Let me know And we hit it off real good Exchange phone numbers mm -hmm. I just randomly Send him a beat and he liked it, so I just kept sending him beats, sending him beats, and that's how we hit it off. And we, you know, the chemistry was good from there on. That's fire. But you said you've been, so you started the imprint back in 2005. Correct. So you've really been working for this for, for a minute. For a long time, yeah, because um, what happened, besides like working with Blue, you know, shout out to my brother Cover, Clean the Dirty, and Umbrella Studios. And, and, you know, these were producers that were always sending me beats. And basically at the time, I was trying to build the empire and the accolade. And then, uh, you know, the record started getting on High 97. Shout out to Drewski. They just played uh, Street Legend last night, produced by Blue Diaz. And then I had another record called The Army that he wound up airing out for me that was produced by Amadeus. Then another song by uh, me and Corey Guns called I'm Coming, produced by Cover. Yeah, yeah. So when I started to notice these traction that every time I do a track with these three producers, you know, I'm getting airplay, I'm getting airtime. So I just kept on consistently, and that's what I'm going for now to drop, you know, right. my new album that's coming now, besides the first album that I have out. Well, going back like to your like your history, you know, even going back to like all to 2005, you know, you talked about like starting the imprint and like working for up until this time, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, like putting your years and time into the game, working for like that 10,000 hours that people talk to, talk Correct. about um, for mastery. Like along this way, bro, like what is like, you know, you talked about learning the business. Like what have been some of the things that like, you know, now that you wish you knew back in uh, 2005? Basically, uh Oh, and I and that's a great question. I could basically say almost everything that I learned now. I wish I knew in two thousand and five. Right. Like uh, how important it is to own your publishing. How important it is to own your masters. How important it is to copyright your music. Where to copyright it at. Make sure that your metadata is correct. Make sure that basically uh, you're registering and filing your music, and that you know you're following the sequence. Because of I've learned that a lot of artists sometimes you get angry at why you're not getting paid, but you're shortchanging yourself by not 
documenting your music and it's it's kind of like the IRS and paying taxes. You don't document it, no paper trail, you won't make money digitally. Right, right. And that's and that's something that you had to learn the hard way. And I had to learn the hard way cuz a lot of the people that I'm with or that I affiliated with are from the old school. Right. So because they're from the old school genre of hip hop, they didn't believe in digital. They mm -hmm. were the ones that, you know, were selling our CDs out the trunk of our car, you know, we're friends with DJs this that. So even them, they still ask me now like, "Wow, I love your progress. Look at how far you have came." And then, you know, learning how to become a publicist and PR away from being a artists and then just learning international marketing and campaigning i just basically put myself in a position where i became a sponge and started to learn everything so i can duplicate the process how do you like explain that to people in that like regard to yeah, the best way to say it is okay if i have five dollars right and i invest into something and i don't know anything about it right how can i maximize my profit yeah that's the best way and they and they get that and they get that yeah because you think about it why am i going to invest five bucks into something i know nothing about but right. not try to learn sure. about it that not for sure. With Blue, like with the produ production side of things too, like what have been like your hurdle that you had to overcome with learning about like kind of like the points, the percentages, like did you kind of go through the same type of situations that he did? Yeah, I kind of did, but Lazarus has taught me a lot. And um, shout out to World, shout out to uh, to Reggie, my, my other partner, Reggie Lane's out there too as well. Other people out there that I, I, when I came into this business, I just came in like very blinded. I didn't know nothing about it. I just started making beats randomly for people to say, hey, listen, man, you know, you could get paid from this. Your percentages, your paperwork and everything. So Laz got me straight with that as well. Oh, shout wow. out so you helped him out too. Yeah, yeah, he helped me out because I didn't know nothing about the business. I just came in, hey, I know how to make beats. That that was it. I just came in one foot in the door. That's it, you know? Right. And, th and that kind of started from when we was at the Beloved Showcase, Um, you know, where I performed my song with Paris last night. My brother to Paris, shout out to him. Uh, Blue Hat came to me and, you know, he was giving me more beats. And my whole thing is I like to do music and business the proper way. Doesn't matter who it is. I need your IPI. If you don't know your stuff, I will small, <laughs> I will small educate you and show you. Gone. Where's John? I know Shout out to John. Shout out to John. 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 You already know in the whole on the <laughs> radar family, but that's something I'm big on and yeah. pet peeve with any artist, producer. Why? Because you deserve your credit. We're making an intellectual property. Realize that. Right. Cause, but you know what it also is, too, is like, even though it's funny because you're like, oh, I'm explaining this to like the last generation. And then we, me and John be trying to explain it to the young kids. That's like, why is all your music on YouTube but not on stream? And you're actually like losing money because you got people who are just uploading your records to like TuneCore or some other distributor who, you know, they're not monitoring all this because they, you know, it's not really their job to monitor some of that unless you're a major label. And that's how they're getting screwed because it's like, I'm trying to think of like an example, like a young drill rapper from the Bronx, his video gets a million views on YouTube. He doesn't put it on streaming. He doesn't do the right paperwork, blah, 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 blah whatever it is. And then somebody else uploads it and it gets a million streams, and then they make that person makes all the money from the streams. The first thing I go and look at, right, shout out, because, you know, in my day job, I work with the youth. The first thing I go and do is I utilize and I talk to the parents. A lot of the parents, a lot of times, right, don't realize their kids are doing things, they're out doing music, and you're trying to teach them a structure home, but you're not looking at what their dream is. Remember, part of being a great parent is helping your kid achieve that dream. Sure. So if my kid wants to do something, I'm going to make sure that I learn everything about that business in Evander to be able to teach my child. So when they give me poor excuses, like, oh, I didn't do that, I go, imagine you wanted to do something your whole life, and I finance you and give you all the money, right? But I don't believe anything in your dream because I don't take time to listen. Mm. Fact. So that gives them something to stop and look back. Wait, that's how you feel? No, that's what you demonstrate to me when you're not willing to do that for your seed. Mm. You get what I mean? I don't even have children, and I do things for other children. You know what I mean? So I, I take that very big, Gabe. The first thing I look at and go, well, you're obviously not worried about them prospering. You only want them to live your dream. And that's the problem that we're in now in Generation X. We have to realize the kids are the future and that they're going to change the you know, future from what we see when we look at their dreams. Right. That's a good that's a good way to put it. But I think it's funny how it's like you're explaining the same like you're explaining the things to the last generation, we're explaining it to the kids. And that's the be and that's one of the greatest parts. That goes to show me the level of thinking on where y'all at because also everybody needs to know. There's not enough literacy within the music community to like explain these things to people, you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of times it's shrouded and you know and hidden like books. So if right. you don't study, it's not gonna come out. I mean there's also a lot of cases too where it's like we'll try to put out a a, a, a song and like we'll have like the connections to the producer like we'll have their email their ig whatever and like but they haven't posted anything in like a year and a half two years they might not even be producing anymore so like we're just like you know you want to do good business but you also you gotta get the song out you know what i'm saying correct so what happens is in that case that's when i try to hit the producer up i do whatever part i've learned that now they made it easy you know you can go to ai and ai can actually search a person's name and I help you that. find yeah they're publishing and all of that i know because shout out to my bro cover when he couldn't find this i found it for him Oh, get out of here, for real? <laughs> I mean, it is oh, what it wow. is. That's crazy, That's bro. Amazing. That's crazy. But with you now, like, 
with all like the history within the music and the history within New York, right? And you kind of being how do what type of artist you categorize yourself as, or what type of rapper? I, I categorize myself as a master of ceremony. I like that. And the reason I say that is because I make all forms and genres of music. I mean, I can make house music, I can make Spanish music, I can make hip hop, I can make trap, I can do whatever. But I've learned that besides just rapping to itself, the creation part of writing the song is my favorite part. Mm. Well, have you wrote for other people before? Yes, I have. Okay. And how did you navigate that too? Because I know that that's like a very what, touchy lane when it comes to like publishing and writer credits and. Well, what happens is there usually there's two stipulations. Either we have a one-on-one -on -one binding contract at the end of the day where they want to pay for the all exclusive, where they don't mention anything for me at all. That's fine with me. Then you also have the other one where you want to pay a less percentage and there's points and you have to mention me in the credit. Mm. So I give people the option and choice. Some people have paid me discreetly and like, yo, dude, I don't want anybody to ever know nothing. And it's like, okay with me because I'm still the same last. Right. But then then your opinion of like, I guess, would that be considered like a ghostwriter in that? Sense? Correct. And that's why I ghostwrite because I even write R&B as well too. So that's the thing. So what is like your overall opinion about ghostwriters then? Uh, my overall opinion. I haven't ha written ghostwriter for people before. My thing is um, regardless of what we need them in the industry because you have people that are amazing entertainers but can't write any words whatsoever but can freely express kind of like a movie. Right. So I know that they're needed at the same time, but I feel that at the same time they're kind of like shadow banned, almost like an Instagram. People don't want to hear about them. They're like, wait, what do you mean? you had a ghostwriter like you're not a good artist if you had a ghostwriter no you have people that are performing artists right. and people that are inspiring creating artists that's the difference mm. that's a good way to put it because i feel like we're too quick to like shame people for having like co-writers on mm -hmm. records or things like that because it's like i don't know sometimes even a co-writer could just be somebody who was in the room and just gave you a couple of ideas for the song for real for real too correct i look at it a little bit different see because i always think as a team so i look at it like if i win then we won and if i can give you yeah. credit as well and get you a spy you know a spotify or itunes plaque for something you helped me with i mean that's a trophy <laughs> that's a true i go a lot you got a plaque for it you nobody got to know nothing about it you get to just you have people yeah there's people that's silent that's like that like shout out dj energetic you know my song swipes right now is number 43 on iTunes, shout out to him. I know all the records that he has pushed and helped co-produce it with me and all that. Why wouldn't I want him to get a trophy and a plaque as well for his hard work? Right, right. So, you, so you're all for like the co-writing, the ghostwriting, and all that like that. Correct. And that's that. I feel like people from New York, especially, wouldn't be like open to like admitting or speaking about that too. You know? Of course, because there's it, so much pride and and you know. You said you know, it, and this big pertain image. But I'm not gonna lie to you. Some of the greatest writers and some of the greatest entertainers will tell you, I had this person write for me. Right, right. Oh, you think about uh, my favorite reference track is the work Rihanna reference track that Party Next Door did. Correct. Party Next Door killed that too. Off the chain. That's one of my favorites as well, too. And then, you know, I, I guess I look at it that way because, remember, then I sit with the producers. It's kind of like sampling. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the best music comes out of sampling, but yeah. you still got to clear the sample. You know, I was just watching today. I was watching this. Uh, I forgot who was getting interviewed, but um, my boy, shout out my brother, Will. He um, he tweeted it. He was like, oh, I hate sn sample snitching because about this guy who had this big record. He got sampled. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, feel free to chime in as the producer with the sampling. And he, uh, he got... He got caught with the sample. Like apparently, there's like the certain lawyers who just go on like the who sampled this site. Correct. And they just look and they see if, if it, and then they'll find a sample. They'll see if it was cleared, and then they'll go, you know, do their lawyer thing. But apparently, there's like a law where you can't go back past three years or something like that, right? Correct. So after three years, I don't know if it's, I don't know exactly the. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what the law was because it's a yeah. minute long clip. But like something after those three years, like if the penalty isn't as bad or whatever. It is right, but he still ended up having to pay some type of money and some type of percentage off the record. So you see, and that's a prime example. Shout out to DJ Will, of course. Um, you know that's why you know people got to learn about the Harry and Fox agency, making sure then they you clear samples that you have that. See, that's why I say I'm a little bit ahead, Gabe. Like I'm part of that, and away from being an artist as a DJ, I know that. So before I play a record and I go places, right, I try to tell people make sure it's a registered venue, make sure you have everything in your right category, so that way you're not missing yeah, out yeah. on your stream money. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. As a, as a producer, like, do you struggle with the sample? Oh, uh, what I do is uh, I chop up my samples to the point where nobody can recognize it. <laughs> hey. You know, I'm being honest. You gave you out of fire. I yeah. mean, so, sometimes they can recognize it, but I go back, you know, I go back to the lab and just try to chop it up as much as I can so people can't recognize it. That's literally so it's like, yeah. I'm, I have like, I, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. what song it is. I'll tell y'all after. But there's a song that we put out that, like, is like the sample is super unrecognizable. Like, and you would, like, have to literally be like, a certain type have to of sit there really really dig into it and listen yeah. to it you, yeah. you have to be a certain outside a certain fan of something yeah. of something to really understand what the sample was because i was just in the studio with them i'm like oh you should do this sample and they're like oh 
this is crazy. And then like, but you really have to be a fan of this one thing to understand, but I'm not going to incriminate myself on camera. So anyway. Of course not. Um, but with the two of y'all, like, what's the project that y'all are working on right now? All right. So the project, um, it doesn't have a name yet. The reason why I didn't give it a name was because I thought of one name, but just kind of like you said right there, Gabe, I want to make sure nobody else is trying to, you know, use the name or anything like right. that. But um, I, the reason it's happening is because I already got 10 records basically from them. And uh, I started to say to myself, are these the 10 records that we want to put out to the world or we're going to pick out the best out of these 10? So out of these 10 so far, I've picked three. So I said, you know what, let's do two more at the end of the day. And then that's when the EP project could come out. Right. And uh, I kind of, I'm going to tell you why I like it. I'm coming from the Bronx. He's coming from Brooklyn. Mm. And if you know the stories of hip hop, you know, back in the days, those boroughs didn't like each other. Right. So right now we're showing them that we're meshing and we're dead in that. It's about the music and the love and the connection right, and giving them right. good music. That's fire. That's fire. And who else is on the project with you? Uh, there's a couple of special guest appearances on there. I got something on there with World of Rama. Shout out to him. I got Shout something with uh, The Paris. I got something with Reggie Lane's on there. I got Lonnie Reggie Lyric Lane's on there. Lyric. You know, we have some crazy uh, records on there. So and then there's a few other within our circle. people that's right, within right. our circle. Um, okay, fire. You know, and don't get me wrong, Gabe, because, you know, I'm a hard critic. So even if they're in our circle and I didn't like the song, it will get backpacked. That's just how it is. I'm not afraid to say that on yeah. air anywhere we at. We are harsh critics amongst ourselves. And on top of that, shout out my brother Josiah Hotwire. Of course, I got something coming with him on um, on his production and something on Blues Beat that he's definitely gonna be featured, you know, on the album because that's my guy. What, what was like? What's kind of like the messaging within this project too? With, within this project, I guess it's bringing back the essence of real hip hop to New York. Why? Because I feel that we lost the essence. Atlanta took it over, and they don't realize why we lost it. And I'm not afraid to tell New Yorkers why. We got to stop being lazy. <laughs> We got, you know, shorter with our music, songs got less, there's no more three verses, you know, the sample's this. Guys are only giving you seven bars, which is not even a, like, you know, real number. So mm -hmm. I look at it like music has dumbed down, so we shortchanged ourselves. I'm trying to show them I'm from that golden era of hip hop where you really had to rap. Mm. And that's what, this, that's what this message is, that we can still give them golden era hip hop on futuristic beats and still show them and give a message that we need to stop being lazy. I love that, man. That's fire. It's honest truth. That's fire. You want to put a hip? He's always he's saying everything. Uh, right. Yeah, well, I consider myself to be a modern boom bap, boom bap producer. Okay, you know? that's that. You call that '90s now. I call that '90s now. Okay, you '90s know? now. So, yeah, '90s now producer. '90s now producer. Yes, where it's like people say, oh, "Hey, you know what? It sounds '90s, but it sounds very updated." Some futuristic 90s, you know? So, Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 90s now on the project. Yeah, 90s now on the project, you know? So I got, uh, you know, to my brother Lazarus over here. We got the project coming out pretty soon. We haven't titled it yet. Um, shout out to World of Rama. We ha I have a project with him. Uh, we got Go Baby. Uh, we also have uh, Queens Get the Money. And uh, shout out to Million Dollar Smile. We have this song called Cold World. Reggie Lanes, I got a few songs with him. I got a project with him. Miss Seattle. That boy's uh, working. I got two songs with her that I produced for her. Uh, Lonnie Lyric, I got a song <clears throat> that I used the uh, Erica Badu sample on and on. Fire, yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm working out here. I'm really working out here. Fire. Trying to make things happen. That's it, you know? I love that. So we're going to have the project by this summer, hopefully. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. What else we got cooking for the rest of the year? Uh, for the rest of the year, my new album coming out um, is going to be titled The Life of a Dawn, Volume 1. Nice. Um, I was going to release it through um, Amadeus, but now, you know, as like I said, when you learn the business, you step up. So now they see me with my own distribution and my own stuff. So I'm going to put out my own album, of course, and show people, you know, what it's all about. Fine, man. Well, congrats on that. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. I look forward it. to both the projects. You know you're going to get that email. Um, of course. Of appreciate y'all coming here today. Thank, Thank you, you so for having much, us. One Take Freestyle. You already know. Um, before we get up out of here, y'all can both let the people know where they can follow you at. Anything else you want the fans on? Now's the time to do it. Uh, Blue, your camera's right here. Laz, your camera's right here. Man, you already know. It's your boy Lazarus, the Top Dawn. If you ain't familiar, make sure you get you know familiar. Log on to my website, www.topdawnempire.com. Shout out to On The Radar. Shout out to Gabe. Shout out to Clean The Dirty Productions. Blue Vision Beats. You already know my brother Amadeus in the Army. And I know what it is. One Take Laz, man. We here. Bow. You already know. Blue Diaz, super producer. Blue Vision Beats. You can find me on Instagram, BLU underscore DIAZ80. You know, I'm out here working. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's go. There you go. Well, look, make sure you go follow them both. Go run up the project when it's out. Uh, go run up the freestyle. Go show them some love. Go show them some support. Love is free. Support is free. But Charvin knew that's the next time on the radar. We out. Bow. Bow. Love. Love.